What's up, y'all? We are back. I actually miss talking to y'all, okay? So we are back with reviewing another season of Put A Ring On It. Y'all know, I I feel like I ain't reviewed that something in a long time, even though I feel like Love Without Borders wasn't that far away, but I guess because Married at First Sight is going on and I am not reviewing it, child. I'm not even watching the show. I am listening to some other reviewers. And when I tell you, I'm so happy I didn't waste my time. I'm so happy I have reclaimed my time this season with Married at First Sight. Child, because it just, oh Lord, it seems so ghetto. Okay, but anyway, we are here for Put a Ring on It, season four, episode one, y'all. We are back with some brand new couples and a brand new doctor, okay? Of course, I'm gonna see if I can gather and find some photos of the couples. I give y'all a little visual over here in the corner as we are talking and getting used to the couples of the TV show. But let's jump right into it. And let's talk about this first episode, y'all. How did y'all like it? Drop down in the comments, okay? Um, so we get introduced to the couples. We have Dunbar and Chance. We have Ricky and Catherine. And then we have Joya and Jaisha. They are three couples we have. Dr. Stacy is the new doctor that we have this season. So no Dr. Nicole. I want to know to see what happened there because I liked Dr. Nicole. But also by the end of this episode, Dr. Stacy Dr. Stacy was given what's supposed to have gave. Okay, because she was fitting to gather the people. All right. And I was here for it. Okay. So, as y'all know, this show is based out of ATL Ho Atlanta. It opens up with all the couples meeting each other, and we get to meet Dr. Stacy for the first time. Dr. Stacy jump, jumps right in and lets us know, like, I know this ain't the doctor y'all was expecting. I am not Dr. Nicole. Y'all do not see no long ponytail hanging from the back of my head, okay? <laughs> because Dr. Nicole has been the doctor for the past three seasons but she lets us know that she has lots of experience and the goal is the same to determine who will get married at the end of this. She says she's from Memphis. She went to school at Spelman and she got into this career because her mom was married five times. Her grandma was married three times and her dad was married multiple times. I was like gee Zus lady okay she says that on her mom's deathbed she said that she basically kind of went through all these marriages even though she was like in the midst of going through her fifth divorce when she passed because she just wanted you know her and Dr. Stacy's brother to know that black love and marriage can work but I was like isn't that kind of showing them the opposite I'm R.I.P. mama no disrespect but isn't that showing them the opposite just continuously getting married over and over and over and over again just my opinion. Let's move on. <laughs> so Dunbar and Chance, um, they have been dating one year. He wants to get married by the end of the year. And she is the one that is hesitant. They met in Dallas. Dun Dunbar is a former athlete and child. They just fell in love. OK, their first date, they say, was in the hospital because she got sick. He jumped right in to help her. I think she had to get her appendix removed. And up the, after a couple months together, child, he said he this was the one she was it for him. Um, but he says he needs her to be a little bit more domestic and she doesn't disagree necessarily. Child, he wants, you know, dinner cook, clean draws and foot rubs. OK, um, he says he's looking for a submissive woman and just, you know, off of this first episode, it just doesn't seem like Chance is the submissive woman type. So he may be expecting something that she just does not naturally give. And that's OK. You just need to find the woman that's woman to get that's willing to give that to you. Um, but Chance says, you know, these things um, is not just kind of what he wants is what he needs. OK, um, then we move on to Joya and Jaisha. They have been together for two years. They love the travel. She thinks that they should have been married by now and starting a family. He's like, yeah, we can probably start a family like the next two and a half to three years. And she's like, you want me to be dang near 40. So I didn't catch catch their ages. I don't think they showed it this episode, but I'm assuming she's, you know, mid to late 30s at this point. Um, she tells him that the desire to have a baby is non-negotiable. She starts to tear up a little bit in their confessional. And she's basically like, you know, just you just may not be the one for me if we can't make this happen. Dr. Stacy asked if she could have it her way. You know, when would she want to start trying to have a baby? And she said by the end of next year. So I think this was filmed last year. So by the end of this year, she wanted to start trying for a baby. 
Next, we meet Catherine and Ricky. They met in 2012. She ended up having to move to take care of her grandmother in Texas, and they agreed they couldn't do the long distance, so they kind of let things go. Um, they reunited. Now they've been dating for two years, and Ricky says that they aren't married because he's been married before, and that marriage failed so he basically is kind of afraid to repeat the same thing but I'm like sir this isn't the same woman you gotta let that baggage go go to therapy therapy I, I have a feeling I'm gonna be saying that a lot this season go to therapy get over that or stop wasting this lady's time okay Catherine says she thinks that they are suffering in the romance department and he says I just need her to be patient because of my past so Dr. Stacy, she gets all dramatic, lets them know that they're going to date other people. Wow. Shocker. We didn't know. That's the premise of the show. We can just skip on past that at this point. OK, so this week's dates are starting with the woman and it's starting right now. And of course, the women are acting like they ain't ready, child. Y'all, I am so sick of people coming on these type of shows and acting like oh, I'm not ready. Give me more. This is what y'all came here for. So let's get the show on the road. Episode one. Let's get these dates started. OK, so we go back to Dunbar and Chance's place. Chance comes out. She looks amazing while Dunbar sitting on this teeny tiny couch. Y'all, I'm like, I guess he's a teeny tiny man. So he, a teeny tiny couch works just fine for him. OK. He wants to set some boundaries before she goes on this date. She just wants, you know, them to just go on the dates, explore. And she's like, I'll be right back. Like she's just going to the store and she'll be right back. Um, her date, Phil, shows up, who is 32 years old. And he says any woman that gets him is going to be blessed. OK, Dunbar answers the door, tries to be hard. I'm like, sit your little stuff down because it's coming off like you got little man syndrome already. He tells Phil that Chance is his future wife and to be, please be respectful because that is his queen. He then asks this man about his mama and daddy as he's sitting on the chair. He's like, you came in here, your pants was pulled up. And he's letting him know that he wants them to bring him back something to eat from their date. And I'm just like, Dunbar, you doing the most. Like this was so extra and unnecessary but he's not done acting an ass yet okay he then says he wants to leave with prayer because ultimately there are two black people going out into this world and he really wants them to be safe so he starts to pray he's holding her date's hand while she is standing behind him with her arms wrapped around his waist and her hand on his heart <sighs> This is only episode one, y'all. No. <laughs> First dates, okay? So he starts to pray, and within his prayer, he lets, I guess, the big G-O-D upstairs, Sky Daddy, know that these same hands that I'm praying with is these same hands that I will beat your ass with. Okay, Dunbar. It's, it, it's enough. Okay. He lets them know that she'll be in good hands, and they finally get to leave for their date. Next up is Joya getting ready for her date and she looks absolutely beautiful as well. They talk about boundaries and Jaysha says that there are no boundaries and things can just happen naturally as they did with the two of them. Joya's date is Kyle and the dramatics are a whole lot less than Dunbar and I'm here for it. Um, Kyle says, you know, it's really hard to see Kyle. No, not Kyle. I'm sorry. Jaysha says it's hard for her to see her actually go out, but he actually does not show out. So over at Ricky's and Catherine's place, Catherine is getting ready and I am all ready for Ricky to cut these little ugly braids. It makes him look like he is a 15 year old man child at this point. Um, her date is Catherine's date is Mark. He is 32 years old. He shows up for, with roses for Catherine. Ricky tells Mark, you know, do your thing because it's been a minute since I've taken her out. And, you know, Mark is like, it's been a minute since you took in your lady out. He's like, yeah, yeah, we kind of go out. But, you know, it's been a while. You don't want to tell the man who's taking your woman out on a date. It's been a minute since you've taken your woman out on a date. Like, <laughs> my guy. Um, Mark asked when the last time she got flowers, too. I said, OK, Mark, I see you shots fired all right but i'm gonna need Catherine because the way she was dressed i thought they were about to go do something physical but they didn't girl i need you to step it up a little bit for the next day and looked hella cute coming out the house okay no leggings no workout pants and sneakers we need to be looking cute okay 
Um, Chance and Phil, they then show up to a bar or a restaurant type deal for their date. He tries to hold her hand and she's like, uh-uh, not yet, mm-mm. She asks him why he is single. He says, you know, he's been dating, but nothing has stuck and he's also working on himself. Now, when he said that, I was like, now I know we will all forever be a work in progress, but if you still are working on yourself so much that you can't date or see yourself in a relationship, then you might just want to take a, a back seat until you get to that place. Just my opinion. He asked what her hobbies are and she's like, does horseback riding count as a hobby? And he was like, well, I thought you was going, you know, say you like basketball or something. And they start playing around. He asks where she grew up because she has a bit of an accent. She says she is born. She was born and raised in Chicago by her dad. Her mother got sick and passed away when she was eight, which was very difficult for her. She says it's really important um, for women to have good men in their life. And as she's saying that, Phil is just like, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, <coughs> like you see one right over here. I don't know what you got at home. But you see one right here, okay? She says that Dunbar, you know, treats her great. So he has really big shoes to fill. Um, and Phil is just like, it just seems like he was doing a little bit extra when I was picking you up. And, um, you know, it was all right, though, because, you know, I had he had to kind of, you know, look up to me sh saying a short joke. And she was like, now you're not going to be talking about my man, okay? <laughs> But he is short and he was doing extra girl. Catherine and Mark, they go on their date. And child, she actually bought the flowers from the house on their date with her. She asked him if he is single, single. but And he says yes. And Catherine says she does feel some sort of attraction towards him. Mark says he was previously married and he has a child. Catherine shares that she does not have any children, but Ricky does have a child. Mark tells her that, you know, he went to therapy so that he can really be in a positive emotional space since his divorce and everything um, so that he can truly be, you know, there and present for his next relationship. And Catherine kind of shares that's really where the hiccup is with Ricky, because he just kind of already puts this imaginary pressure on Catherine that things are going to end up like it did the last time with his ex-wife. So we see Kyle and Joya on their date and he tells the hostess when they get to the restaurant child that it's a table for two, him and his future wife. Pump the brakes, sir. A little bit too hot and heavy for the very first date. Okay. She asks what a fun date night looks like for them. He says he wants to cook and then go to the park to have a picnic. She says she has asked Jaysha so many times to take her on a picnic. So it really was good to hear, you know, that Kyle said that's what he would do for a nice date because that was a good gesture. He asks where she sees herself in five years and then she kind of starts talking about what she wants in a partner and I was a little bit confused of maybe the editing was chopped and screwed because I was trying to figure out what the two had to do with one another. He says that he has one child biologically but he also takes care of his child's other siblings because their dad passed away and you know he was in the relationship with her with their mother so he took care of them which I thought was big like that is huge for you to not you know, be the father of these four children and y'all not to even be together, but you still consider them to be your children. Like that's, that's, that's some brownie points right there. Okay, Kyle. Um, we learned that Joya has 11, an 11 year old son, but of course we know she is ready for another child. And I just noticed that both of them are just cheesing so hard during this date. She is even flirting with him and wiping crumbs off of his mouth with a napkin child. I'm like, y'all might be in for another date because it's looking like y'all might like each other a little bit. So Chance shows up back home and Dunbar is feeling some type of way, of course, because she wasn't home yet as he was looking at his watch. And I'm like, sit your little teeny tiny behind down and stop being like, this is going to be one date of minty. I need you to not show out like this for the entire season. Phil actually brought Dunbar some french fries back. I really wanted him to make a joke of like, I brought you a kid's meal or something. I think that would have like set off the end of this date for me. <laughs> And then Dunbar is like, you can see yourself out as he is like continuing to like kiss and sexually and sensually hug her, just trying to do team too much. And they're just like, you know, I guess we just going to go do what we do. The two of them actually get on my nerves, if I'm being honest. 
Joya comes back home. Jaysha says that, you know, she was gone long and she was like, it didn't feel like I was gone long, but you know, I had fun. She tells him that she wiped a crumb off of his face and she kind of hyped it up a little bit more than was necessary in my opinion. Um, but Jaysha did not really care for it. Um, and she also lets him know that her date kissed her on the hand and she's like it's fine because you know he's a single man on a date with me now you can't be doing that because you're not a single man and i'm just kind of like y'all need to establish if you're going to establish the boundaries you need to establish the boundaries but y'all can't switch it up from date to date as far as what is off limits and what is on limits okay and if it's going to be the boundary it's going to be the boundary for everybody so even if we say no kissing on the hands that mean Joya, when you go out on dates, the man can't kiss you on the hand. And Jaysha, when you go out on date, you can't kiss no woman on the hand. Like, y'all just got to figure out what it is and be consistent for the both of y'all. It doesn't matter that the person, the people that y'all are going out with are single. The two of you are not single. So whatever that boundary is, both of y'all need to respect it, okay? So all the couples get back together for their first meeting with Dr. Stacy, And Dr. Stacy is ready for the tea, honey. We start with Chance and Dunbar. Y'all, these two... Uh, so she tells the group what happened, especially with all the extra he was doing with the prayer. He says at the end of the day, he has the right to choose who he lets her out of his house with. When he said that, when I tell y'all I about broke my neck, when I had to whip to my TV to say, excuse me, sir. What? Say what now? Dr. Stacy says he sounds like her father and I 1000% agree. What do you mean? The whole premise of this show is to go out on dates with other people. Those people will show up to your house and you need to let her out the house to go on these dates. What do you mean? He then says he can choose who she spends her quality time with. Dr. Stacy asks, you know, how she feels about so much control. And she says she doesn't think um, that Dunbar is controlling at all. And I was like, girl, what kind of Stevie Wonder blind and shades do you have on at this moment? Because, yes, this girl, this man is controlling, honey. Chance said that, you know, the date her date did act a little immature. And I kind of do agree. I felt like, you know, he probably wasn't as mature as she is. And she probably wanted him to be. Dr. Stacy asks why Dunbar feels the need to really dominate. And Chance starts to give excuses for him. And Catherine is like, yeah, I think you really didn't give either of them the opportunity to be them, but their best selves on the date because you kind of preface the date with really all this negative energy. The group did and agrees that Dunbar was really being disrespectful and y'all chance is kind of like dumbfounded like how was that disrespectful Jesus be with us this season because girl he did disrespect that man he made tried to make that man feel little while taking you out on that date like let's not even play these games and Jaysha, I was so happy, stepped up and says that you can be a warrior and still be respectful. And that really just sums it up. You have little man syndrome and you do not have to act like that for other men to give you the respect that you feel like you need and deserve. But when you do all the little petty things you did, it makes people take you for a joke. I'm sorry. It is what it is. Chance said he wasn't controlling and Dr. Stacy says he did control the process because he kind of influenced basically the way you behaved on the date. And Chance thinks, you know, he's still the king. And Dr. Stacy is like, well, I don't see kings talk to people like the, like the way that he's doing it. And I really hope that y'all are taking this process seriously because this behavior that y'all are showing me does not support a healthy relationship. And I was like, get them together, Dr. Stacy, because y'all sitting here making excuses. Well, really, Chance, you making excuses for Dunbar's terrible and immature behavior, girl. That is not cute. That is not cute at all. And I can see that both of them probably gonna get on my nerves and that the both of them are a little bit toxic for each other. And obviously they like it and I'm not sure why, but that's how the episode ends. We did not get to hear how Joya or Catherine's date went. I'm sure that will pick up next week. But if y'all have tuned into this very first episode and put a ring on it for this season, let me know your thoughts on the couples down below. Let me know your thoughts on Dr. Stacy and how y'all think she will fit in this season. So far, so good. I think I'm going to to like her if she continues to check the couples and make them like 
don't feed us the BS because that's not what we're here for. Okay. All right. So drop down in the comments. Let's chat it up. And I look forward to chatting with y'all there. And I'll see y'all next week. Same time, same place. Peace.